The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. Okay, so we're moving on. We're done with taxonomy and now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the morphological characteristics of bacterial cells. So we're specifically going to look at their size, uh, their shape, and their arrangement, or the clusters or the groupings that they form. So as far as size is concerned, I mentioned that they're very small organisms. So they're about 0.5. They're about 0.5 to 2 micrometers in diameter. It's actually a small typographical error right there. Just clean that up. Which is pretty small which is pretty, pretty small. Remember, uh, when we're talking about eukaryotic cells, they can be in the range of anywhere from 10 to 100 micrometers in diameter. So prokaryotes are pretty small cells uh, in and of themselves. Now, as far as their shape is concerned, they tend to adopt three basic shape, shapes. So the first one is a spherical shape. Okay, and the bacterial that adopts a spherical shape is called a coccus. And in plural, it's called a cocci. Now, they also occur in what we call rod-like shapes. So rod-shaped bacteria or rod-shaped bacterium is called a bacillus, plural bacilli, and we also have spiral-shaped bacterial cells. So spiral-shaped bacterial cells is called a uh, spirulum, plural spirula, spirula, but we also have additional varieties of spiral-shaped cells. We have some that are shaped like a comma, and we call those vibrio, and we also have a few that are helically twisted into cylinders. So they actually twist around themselves such that they look like a uh, cylinder. And we refer to those as spiral heats. So those are, those are the three main basic shapes you can expect to see as far as bacterial diversity is concerned. Now, as far as their arrangement is concerned, this is where things start to get interesting. Because bacteria tend to have very distinct uh, arrangements or groupings of cells. So for instance, cocci are usually round, but they can actually be uh, oval shaped, they can be somewhat elongated, they can even be flattened somewhat. So as you can see, for a bacterium that's supposed to be spherical, it can adopt a variety of shapes that uh, would yield or would cause you to see it as something, uh, as something else. Now, what happens when cocci or um, bacteria that belong or the spherical shapes divide is that they can do so in a variety of ways. Now, if they actually divide in one plane, the structure or the resultant uh, structure we're going to get is going to be called a diplococci. So a diplococci is basically a cell pair, so di meaning two. Now, if that cocci actually decided to divide in two planes, it would produce what's called a tetrad. And if it did so in three planes, it would produce a cluster we refer, we refer to as a sarcomay. Now, uh, if it does so in chains or it divides to form chains of cells that are attached to one another, then we would call that a streptococci. That's a term or uh, most of you or some of you might have heard before. Or if the division of that cell, that cocci, that spherical shaped bacterium is random, producing grape-like clusters, then we'll refer to it as a staphylococci. Bacilli, on the other hand, rod-shaped uh, bacteria, they only tend to divide, or for the most part, they tend to divide in one plane. So you're not going to see those uh, really neat, uh, weird arrangements that you'd see in spherical-shaped cells, cells in rod-shaped cells, or in bacilli. Now, uh, spiral-shaped bacteria generally do not uh, aggregate. They're generally not grouped together. They tend to exist um, in isolation on their own, and for that reason, that's something we're not even going to go into. Now, I want to define an important term before we head uh, over into the next slide. And what that term is, is pleomorphism. Now, some bacteria actually display a pretty unique property that they actually change or alter their shape and their size in response to changes in environmental conditions. Okay? So that phenomenon in where you have, or in which you have bacterial cell cells changing their morphology, their shape, or their size uh, because of their environment, that phenomenon is referred to as pleomorphism. And it's actually exhibited or seen in quite a number of different bacterial species. Now, 
Before we move on, I want to mention something important about the term bacillus. So, as I said, a bacillus is a rod-shaped bacterium. But in microbiology, uh, it would behoove you to understand the fact that it can actually also refer to a specific genus. And I'll give you an example. A bacterium that belongs to the genus Bacillus anthracis. Okay, that's a systematic name. Okay, that's a technical name, uh, the systematic name for that bacterial strain, for anthrax. So as you can see here, the word bacillus is actually used to identify its genus. So be careful when you're using that term or that word. Understand that it can have two meanings, meanings depending on how and where it is used. So what we're actually going to do now is we're going to move on to the next slide. We have a really good picture, a really good diagram that actually shows you 